I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. Emily was an avid historian with a particular fascination for the dark and mysterious. She had spent years studying the infamous crimes of Jack the Ripper, poring over every detail and theory. When she received an invitation to attend a special exhibition in London featuring newly discovered artifacts related to the Ripper case, she couldn't resist. This was her chance to see history up close and perhaps even uncover something new about the elusive killer. The exhibition was being held at an old Victorian mansion in Whitechapel, the heart of Jack the Ripper's hunting ground. The mansion, with its ornate but decaying facade, seemed to hold secrets of its own. Emily arrived just before dusk, the sky overcast and the air heavy with the promise of rain. She shivered as she approached the grand entrance, feeling a mix of excitement and unease. Inside, the mansion was dimly lit, the flickering candlelight casting eerie shadows on the walls. The exhibition was spread across several rooms, each dedicated to different aspects of the Ripper case. There were photographs of the crime scenes, replicas of the letters allegedly written by the Ripper, and various items from the period. But the main attraction was a newly discovered collection of personal items believed to have belonged to the victims. Emily wandered through the rooms, captivated by the displays. She paused in front of a glass case containing a bloodstained shawl, reportedly found near one of the murder scenes. As she leaned in to get a closer look, she felt a chill run down her spine. The air around the case seemed to grow colder, and she could almost hear the echoes of the past. Fascinating, isn't it? A voice said from behind her. Emily turned to see an older man, dressed in a dark suit, his eyes sharp and inquisitive. Yes, very, she replied. It's incredible to see these items up close. The man nodded. I'm Dr. James Hartley, the curator of this exhibition. You must be Emily. I've heard about your research. Quite impressive. Emily blushed slightly. Thank you, Dr. Hartley. It's an honor to be here. They chatted for a while about the exhibits and the latest theories surrounding the Ripper case. Dr. Hartley seemed particularly interested in Emily's thoughts on the recently discovered artifacts. As they spoke, the mansion grew quieter, the other guests having moved on to different rooms or left for the night. Would you like a private tour? Dr. Hartley offered. I can show you some items not on display. Emily eagerly accepted, thrilled at the opportunity. Dr. Hartley led her down a narrow, dimly lit corridor to a small room at the back of the mansion. Inside, the walls were lined with shelves filled with old books and boxes. In the center of the room was a large wooden table, covered with documents and artifacts. This is where we keep some of the more delicate items, Dr. Hartley explained. Things that require further study before we can display them. He showed her a collection of letters, purportedly written by Jack the Ripper, along with sketches of the crime scenes and notes from the original investigators. Emily was in awe, unable to believe her luck. As she examined a particularly intriguing letter, she noticed something strange. The handwriting looked eerily familiar, almost as if she had seen it before. Her heart raced as she realized it matched the handwriting in a journal she had found in her attic years ago, a journal that had belonged to her great-great-grandfather. Dr. Hartley, where did you find these letters? She asked, trying to keep her voice steady. He looked at her curiously. They were discovered in a hidden compartment in this very mansion. Why do you ask? Emily hesitated, unsure if she should reveal her discovery. I think, I think my great-great-grandfather might have been involved in the investigation. His journal has similar handwriting. Dr. Hartley's eyes widened with interest. That's quite a revelation. May I see the journal? Emily nodded, promising to bring it the next day. As she prepared to leave, Dr. Hartley handed her a small, ornate key. This opens a drawer in the table. Inside, you'll find something that might interest you. Consider it a thank you for sharing your knowledge. She accepted the key, intrigued. Back in her hotel room, she examined the key, its intricate design hinting at secrets yet to be uncovered. The night was restless, her mind racing with possibilities. She couldn't wait to return to the mansion and unlock the drawer. The next morning, armed with her great-great-grandfather's journal, Emily returned to the mansion. Dr. Hartley greeted her warmly and led her back to the small room. She handed him the journal, and he began to read through it. 
his expression growing more intense with each page. This is extraordinary, he murmured. Your ancestor was indeed involved in the investigation, and it seems he had his own theories about the Ripper's identity. Emily's heart pounded as she used the key to unlock the drawer. Inside, she found a bundle of old letters, similar to the ones on the table, and a small, leather-bound diary. She opened the diary and gasped. It contained detailed accounts of the murders, written in the first person. These aren't just letters, she whispered. This is a confession. Dr. Hartley's eyes gleamed with excitement. If this is authentic, it could change everything we know about the case. As they poured over the diary, a sense of dread settled over Emily. The confessions were chillingly detailed, describing the murders with a cold, clinical precision. The writer seemed to take a twisted pleasure in recounting each act of violence. Suddenly, the room grew colder, and the flickering candlelight seemed to dim. Emily felt a presence behind her and turned to see a shadowy figure standing in the doorway. Her blood ran cold as she recognized the face from old photographs, a face she had seen countless times in her research. Jack the Ripper. The figure stepped closer, its eyes filled with a malevolent intelligence. Dr. Hartley stood frozen, his face pale. Emily backed away, her mind racing. How was this possible? Was this some kind of hallucination brought on by the intense research? The figure spoke, its voice a low, menacing whisper. You should not have come here. Emily's breath caught in her throat. Who, who are you? The figure smiled, a chilling, predatory grin. I am the darkness that haunts these streets. I am the fear that lingers in the shadows. And now, I am here for you. The candles went out, plunging the room into darkness. Emily felt a cold hand grasp her arm, and she screamed. Dr. Hartley fumbled for a light, but when the room was illuminated again, the figure was gone. The diary lay open on the table, its pages fluttering as if touched by an unseen hand. Emily and Dr. Hartley stared at each other, their faces pale with fear. We need to leave, Dr. Hartley said, his voice trembling. Now! They gathered their things and fled the mansion, the feeling of being watched never leaving them. As they drove away, Emily glanced back at the old house. In one of the windows, she saw the shadowy figure watching them, its eyes gleaming with a sinister promise. Back in her hotel room, Emily tried to make sense of what had happened. She knew one thing for certain. Jack the Ripper's ghost was real, and it was still haunting the streets of Whitechapel. The diary's confession had stirred something dark and ancient, something that would not rest until it had claimed more victims. Emily and Dr. Hartley vowed to continue their research, determined to uncover the truth and put the restless spirit to rest. But they knew it would not be easy. The darkness that Jack the Ripper had unleashed over a century ago still lingered, and it was watching, waiting for the right moment to strike. And, and as Emily lay in bed that night, she heard a faint rhythmic tapping on her window. Emily lay in bed, her heart pounding as the rhythmic tapping grew louder. She slowly got up, her body trembling with fear. She reached for her phone, intending to call Dr. Hartley, but the signal was gone. The tapping persisted, and she realized it was coming from the window. Summoning every ounce of courage, she approached the window and pulled back the curtain. There was nothing there. The tapping stopped abruptly, leaving an eerie silence in its wake. Emily backed away from the window, her breath coming in shallow gasps. She needed to find Dr. Hartley. She threw on her coat and left her hotel room, the hallway feeling colder and more oppressive than before. The night clerk at the front desk barely glanced at her as she hurried out of the hotel. The streets of London were empty, the fog swirling around her as she made her way to Dr. Hartley's apartment. The city seemed to hold its breath, the usual noises of traffic and distant conversations conspicuously absent. When she arrived at Dr. Hartley's building, she found the door slightly ajar. She hesitated for a moment, then pushed it open and stepped inside. The hallway was dark, the only light coming from a flickering bulb at the far end. She made her way up the stairs, her footsteps echoing in the silence. Reaching Dr. Hartley's apartment, she knocked softly. Dr. Hartley? It's Emily? There was no answer. She knocked again, louder this time. The door creaked open, revealing a dimly lit room. Emily stepped inside, her eyes scanning the space. The apartment was in disarray, papers and books scattered everywhere. The sense of dread intensified as she moved deeper into the room. Dr. Hartley? 
She called out again, her voice trembling. A faint sound reached her ears, coming from the bedroom. She approached cautiously, her heart pounding in her chest. Pushing open the door, she found Dr. Hartley lying on the floor, unconscious but breathing. She knelt beside him, shaking his shoulder gently. Dr. Hartley, wake up. He groaned and slowly opened his eyes, confusion and fear etched on his face. Emily? What happened? I don't know, she replied, helping him to his feet. I heard the tapping again and came to find you. Are you all right? Dr. Hartley rubbed his temples, trying to clear his head. I was reading the journal when I felt a presence in the room. The next thing I knew, everything went dark. They exchanged worried glances, the realization of their situation sinking in. The ghost of Jack the Ripper was not just a restless spirit. It was an intelligent, malevolent force determined to keep its secrets hidden. We need to figure out how to stop it, Emily said, her voice steady, despite the fear gripping her. There has to be something in the journal that can help us. Dr. Hartley nodded, his determination matching hers. Let's go back to the mansion. We need to confront this head on. They gathered their things and left the apartment, the oppressive atmosphere following them as they made their way back to the Victorian mansion. The fog had thickened, creating an almost impenetrable veil around them. The journey felt interminable, each step heavy with dread. When they finally arrived, the mansion loomed before them like a dark sentinel. The front door was slightly ajar, just as they had left it. They stepped inside, the air immediately growing colder. The flickering candlelight cast long, dancing shadows on the walls, making the interior feel alive. They headed straight for the small room at the back, where the newly discovered artifacts were kept. The sense of foreboding grew stronger with each step. Inside the room, the diary lay open on the table, the pages fluttering as if moved by an unseen hand. Emily and Dr. Hartley began to scour the diary for any clue that could help them banish the spirit. The confessions were detailed and horrifying, but amid the gruesome accounts, they found references to a ritual. A ritual that Jack the Ripper had performed to bind his soul to the earthly plane. This must be it, Dr. Hartley said, his finger tracing the old, faded ink. If we can reverse the ritual, we might be able to break the connection and send his spirit back to where it belongs. The instructions were complex, involving a series of incantations and the use of specific items that Jack had used in his killings. Emily felt a chill run down her spine as she read the final step. They needed to perform the ritual in the exact location where the murders had taken place. Whitechapel, she whispered. We have to go to Whitechapel. With a sense of urgency, they gathered the necessary items and left the mansion. The streets of Whitechapel were deserted, the fog creating an almost otherworldly atmosphere. They found the site of one of the original crime scenes, a narrow alley that seemed to hold the weight of history and death. They set up the ritual, the cold air biting at their skin. Dr. Hartley began the incantation, his voice strong and clear. Emily stood beside him, holding the items they had collected. The shadows around them seemed to pulse with malevolent energy, and the air grew thicker, almost suffocating. As Dr. Hartley continued to chant, a figure materialized in the alley. The ghost of Jack the Ripper, more solid and terrifying than ever before, stepped out of the shadows. His hollow eyes glowed with a sinister light, and a cruel smile twisted his lips. You cannot stop me, he hissed, his voice echoing through the narrow alley. I am eternal. I am the darkness that haunts your world. Emily felt a wave of fear wash over her, but she stood her ground. We won't let you continue this, she said, her voice steady. The figure advanced, his presence growing more oppressive. Dr. Hartley's chant grew louder, more insistent, as if he were battling the very forces of darkness. The ghost reached out, his skeletal hand aiming for Emily. In a final act of defiance, Emily raised the items and began to chant the final incantation. The air crackled with energy, and the ghost let out a piercing scream. The ground beneath them shook, and the shadows writhed as if in agony. With a blinding flash of light, the ghost of Jack the Ripper was engulfed in a swirling vortex of darkness. The oppressive presence lifted, and the air grew still. The alley was silent once more. Emily and Dr. Hartley stood there, breathing heavily, the realization of their victory sinking in. The spirit of Jack the Ripper had been banished, his hold on the earthly plane broken, 
But as they left the alley, a faint rhythmic tapping echoed in the distance, a chilling reminder that the darkness was never truly gone. It would always be there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to return. As Emily and Dr. Hartley left the alley, the rhythmic tapping faded into the fog, but the sense of unease lingered. They returned to the mansion to ensure all traces of the ritual were securely documented and the diary locked away. Emily felt a strange mixture of relief and dread. They had won this battle, but the war against the darkness felt far from over. Back at the mansion, they carefully stored the artifacts and secured the diary in a locked cabinet. Dr. Hartley decided to stay in the mansion for further research, but Emily was too shaken to remain. She returned to her hotel, hoping for some rest. That night, she had the most vivid and horrifying dream. She was back in Whitechapel, the fog thick and oppressive. The narrow alleys seemed to close in around her, and the sound of footsteps echoed eerily. She turned a corner and came face to face with Jack the Ripper, his eyes burning with malevolence. He reached out for her, his hand cold as death. She tried to scream, but no sound came out. The tapping returned, louder and more insistent, until it filled her head, driving her to the brink of madness. Emily woke up in a cold sweat, her heart racing. She glanced around the dark room, the dream's terror still gripping her. She got up to splash water on her face, trying to shake off the lingering fear. But as she looked into the mirror, she saw something that made her blood run cold. <laughs> Written in the steam on the bathroom mirror were the words, You cannot escape. She stumbled back, her mind racing. How is this possible? They had completed the ritual, hadn't they? She grabbed her phone and called Dr. Hartley, her fingers trembling. Dr. Hartley, something's wrong. I saw him again, in a dream, and now there's a message on my mirror. What if we didn't banish him? What if he's still here? Dr. Hartley's voice was calm but concerned. Emily, stay where you are. I'm coming over. He arrived within the hour, his face pale and drawn. He examined the mirror and the hotel room, his expression growing grimmer by the minute. We need to go back to the mansion. There's something we missed. They hurried back to the mansion, the sense of urgency palpable. The fog seemed thicker, the night darker. Inside, they went straight to the room where the artifacts were stored. Dr. Hartley unlocked the cabinet and retrieved the diary, flipping through the pages frantically. There has to be something here, he muttered. Something we overlooked. Emily helped him search, her heart pounding. As they reached the end of the diary, they found a page that had been stuck to the back cover. Carefully, they peeled it away, revealing a final, cryptic message. The darkness is bound by blood. Only the willing can sever the chain. Dr. Hartley read it aloud, his voice shaking. This, this means the ritual required a sacrifice, a willing sacrifice. Emily's eyes widened. But we didn't, we just performed the ritual with the items. We didn't. A cold wind swept through the room and the candles flickered, the temperature dropped, and the oppressive presence returned. The shadowy figure of Jack the Ripper materialized before them, more solid and terrifying than ever. You thought you could banish me, he hissed, his voice echoing through the room. You have only made me stronger. Emily and Dr. Hartley backed away, fear gripping their hearts. The figure advanced, its eyes burning with malevolence. Dr. Hartley turned to Emily, his face filled with determination and sorrow. Emily, you need to go, now. What are you going to do? She asked, her voice trembling. I'm going to finish this, he said, stepping forward. I will be the willing sacrifice. No, Dr. Hartley, there has to be another way, Emily cried, tears streaming down her face. There is no other way, he said softly. Go. Live. Tell the world what happened here. Before Emily could protest, Dr. Hartley began to chant the incantation, his voice strong and unwavering. The shadowy figure howled in rage, the air crackling with dark energy. Emily stumbled backwards, her mind screaming at her to run, but her feet felt rooted to the spot. Dr. Hartley continued the ritual, his voice growing louder as the shadows closed in around him. The figure of Jack the Ripper let out a deafening scream and the room was filled with a blinding light. Emily was thrown to the ground, her vision blurring as the light engulfed everything. When she regained consciousness, the mansion was silent. The oppressive presence was gone, and the room was empty. 
Dr. Hartley was nowhere to be seen. She stumbled to her feet, her body aching, and made her way to the front door. As she stepped outside, the first light of dawn was breaking through the fog. She took a deep breath, the fresh air filling her lungs. The nightmare was over, but the cost had been high. Emily knew she had to honor Dr. Hartley's sacrifice. She returned to her hotel, packed her bags, and left London. Back in New York, she began to write, documenting everything that had happened. The story of Jack the Ripper's ghost and the ultimate sacrifice that had been made to stop him. But even as she wrote, she couldn't shake the feeling that the darkness was still out there, lurking in the shadows. And every night, as she lay in bed, she heard a faint, rhythmic tapping, a chilling reminder that some horrors never truly end. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 